So today's segment is you may not be ready for prime time. So you're not filming right now, are you? Hey everybody, it's Najee Dorsey here at the Black Art in America Gallery and Najee Dorsey Studio in Columbus, Georgia. I learned that I wasn't ready for prime time when I took my first trip to Memphis to Willis Gallery, which was on Beale Street, one of the top galleries for African American art in the city, in the uh, city, the largest city that was close to where I lived. And walked into Willis Gallery, had my art tucked up under my arm, didn't have an appointment, just walked on in, which is a no-no. One, and then uh, he did give me a minute of his time, took a look at my work, and was definitely not impressed. So, you know, I left there very disappointed after he shared with me that my work really wasn't about much, you know, at that time. And, you know, left, I left deterred, you know, I was, I was, I was hurt, you know. You picked, had to pick up my face off the ground, but a few days later after reflecting, it just, you know, gave me motivation to continue working and then to continue going. I still was in Arkansas sending letters to the preeminent, a number of the preeminent African-American galleries of the time, Savico Gallery in New York, Stella Jones in New Orleans, and Garbo, uh, Hearn Fine Art, and Little Rock, you know, and sending them information about my work, asking them to consider me for a show or representation, and Stella was the only one that sent me a letter back. Uh, so it was just, the letter I got from Stella was a, stand, was a standard rejection letter. You know, thank you for, you know, sending me this information. We can't, you know, really do anything with it right now, but, you know, we'll keep you in mind. Boop, file 13. While I couldn't, you know, while I didn't have any success getting in the gallery, the beauty about this industry is that you can always find support along the way in so many different factions. Um, doing coffee house shows, smaller gallery shows. My first show at the coffee house, actually my first commercial show I recall was in 1996 at the Long Branch Coffee House in Carbondale, Illinois. I did that show and I had roughly, mm, I had the whole space, so I had about 25, 30 pieces on exhibit. Most of it was small works, um, you know, about yay size or what have you. And then I had one large painting that was perhaps say a 30 by 40. And I never forget that moment when I got the phone call from the gallery saying, hey, somebody just left a check for $500. That's right, it was my first $500 sale in 1996. And I can assure you that I felt like I was on top of the world. The majority of the works that I was selling during that time, the smaller works were retailing between 40 and $60. And I sold, oh, I, I didn't say that I sold out. I mean, the show, the, show basically, the show basically sold out. You know, I ended up selling the majority of the work at that show. I mean, again, it was priced at 40 to $60. So it's entry level work for a, new, uh, for a brand new artist, but you know, it still felt good. Yeah, as a new artist, as a younger artist, my advice would be to, you know, while we always want to reach out to the who's who in the, in the contemporary art world or very established galleries, I would suggest giving some consideration on working with smaller galleries, some new galleries perhaps, because they're, they're going to be brand new. They're looking to work with artists. They've got uh, typically a younger clientele base that's looking, that can only buy in a particular price point, generally speaking. And so you may be a perfect fit for working with a young gallery, with a new gallery. And then also uh, give some thought to non-traditional spaces. Look at your community centers, look at your libraries, look at other places that are, you know, not necessarily your white wall galleries, but it gives you an opportunity to put, present your work to the public because at the end of the day, it's up to the public to decide how they're willing to engage with your work and perhaps support your work. And you just never know where that support may come from. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that I would do to encourage artists is to look at doing pop-up shows. I mean, you gotta, uh, in, in this day and age, you gotta take your career into your own hands. And so curate your own shows, come up with a theme, uh, put a proposal together, reach out to a number of uh, places, whether they're coffee houses, community centers, libraries, and look to put together a pop-up show. You'll be forced to handle all your marketing yourself, any expenses associated with any cheese or, or, or snacks that you may want to have. You'll be responsible for getting the word out to the list. Maybe you can leverage the list of the people that's currently uh, that's there in the space that you're looking to work with. But get in control of your own life. That's always going to be my best advice. Do your own pop-up shows. They're great. Even home shows. If you've got people that have supported your work in the past, reach out to them. If you've got a family member or a family friend that loves art, that maybe they've got a piece of your work, ask them to host a show of your work and invite their friends. Okay, art festivals are a great consideration too. It's a, it's a weekend where you get, you know, promoters have got art lovers and collectors coming in are just people who are just interested in getting out and about, taking a stroll, uh, getting some jam, jam and jelly and cotton candy, but you just never know who's gonna walk through. It's a great way to get your work in front of uh, an art buying audience, particularly if you're doing a, a quote unquote uh, fine art festival. 
It's, they're typically juried events. You have to apply months ahead of time and get selected in. But it's a way, it, you know, the market has changed and it's a great way to get in front of people who are interested. But the cool thing is you don't have the gatekeeper that's going to uh, control whether or not you get your work in front of the public. You know, once you get selected into the show, there's uh, typically hundreds of thousands of people that come to these festivals. Oftentimes they're looking to buy work and they're looking for new artists. So the art festival may be one route you may want to consider. Florida, Florida was actually a Florida was actually a great hub for for doing shows, particularly early on in the career, because they have so they have a great concentration of festivals that take place. What I found is that not every place in Florida is the best place to go. Generally speaking, you know, you want to get down toward Miami, you want to go into Central Florida, you want to look at like Sarasota, Fort Myers. I mean, there's a number of shows that's got great reputations for uh, people coming out to support the artists. Okay, so yeah, take you know you want to take control of your art, and I know there's a ton of places online where you can, you know, post something on Facebook, post something on Instagram, and maybe that's working for you. Uh, but another option would be buyblackart.com. It's our fine art listing site for artists and collectors to upload work at a very reasonable cost to list for the month. You got thirty dollars, forty-five, and sixty-nine, and the value of doing it at the sixty-nine dollar level is you get a chance for us to leverage your work on our platform of Facebook and Instagram. And so we got over 100,000 followers on Facebook. If you decide to upload under the $69 pro level, we're gonna share your work on those pages. So it's a great win-win. Another great thing about using Buy Black Art is that people, you deal directly with the consumer. So the people that are coming to our sites uh, that we're pushing through to Buy Black Art, they're gonna deal directly with you. And so if they find a piece that they like, they click on it, it's gonna have your information. So it gives you a chance to build up your own, build your own relationship with people who are interested in your work, unlike working with a gallery. While you may not be ready for prime time, my advice would be is just to focus on your craft, focus on your work, and focus on the business side of developing your career. But understand that your best work is going to be ahead of you. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this particular talk and the tips are helpful. Did we leave anything out? Be sure to let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Sweet. Sweet. Okay, gotcha. My foot falling asleep. Is it still recording? Yeah. Okay, so do I need to do that whole thing again? The whole